Hey y'all, my name's Kathleen Koble, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how you can actually work with sellers as an Amazon influencer. There's so many different ways that you can do this and make this happen, and if you've already been in the program for a while, you're probably getting emails and direct messages from sellers asking you to create videos for them. And so this video is gonna walk you through kind of how to navigate all of that and how you can best make sure to stay in compliance with Amazon while also taking advantage of some of these opportunities. All right, so the first thing before we really dive in is I want to go over some terminology. Um, so there's a couple different ways that we refer to sellers, brands, agents. So particularly these three words, okay, I want to distinguish between the three differences because they're different. So when I'm talking about an agent, I am talking about a person who typically represents multiple different uh, brands on Amazon, usually has a large catalog of products that they're looking to promote. Um, they typically are overseas. Uh, you'll find that they tend to be um, the most aggressive with kind of contacting you and asking you for you know opportunities and to review their products and all that good stuff. Um, unfortunately, they typically have the lowest offering of payouts as well. So when I'm talking about agents, and again, this is just my my experience, this is not, not all agents are created equal, just as not all sellers and brands are created equal, but this terminology, I'm just trying to kind of give you what the difference is as I'm referencing the three different people that will reach out to you. So agents are going to be those people that represent a whole bunch of different brands, a whole lot of products. They might even have their own manufacturing plant, right? And they sell directly on Amazon. So the agents are gonna be people, again, that are typically overseas that have a lot of different products and brands that they're selling on Amazon. Now, when I'm talking about sellers, sellers typically represent one brand on Amazon or they sell a product under one particular seller name on Amazon. And you can see this on the product description, right? You can see like ships and sold by Amazon, right? That particular uh, seller is selling direct to Amazon. So you may not see their seller name, um, but a lot of times you'll see, you know, sold by XYZ seller uh, ships by Amazon. So that is the actual seller. And again, they typically represent one brand or, you know, one seller account. Um, they're a bit smaller as far as product representation compared to agents, but that seller is someone who is selling, you know, directly on Amazon and you can see their information on Amazon too. So the third thing is a brand. And it's important to know what a brand is because Amazon has very specific rules and regulations for brands that sell on their platform. A brand is typically a brand that has a registered trademark and that takes advantage of Amazon's brand registry program. This, the brands typically sell, you know, under their brand name. You can navigate to their storefront on a product listing page right under the title there. It will typically say the brand name and if you can click on it and it goes to a nice pretty storefront with a whole bunch of different things, right? That's a brand. So the brand is typically you know, the, the seller, the, the brand, we, we kind of interchange seller and brand because typically the seller either represents the brand or the seller is the brand. But one really important thing to know is that with Amazon on the seller side, when you are a brand, you get brand registry. And in order to upload your video or upload a video to a product listing page, that seller must be a brand. It must be registered with brand registry. So you may encounter sellers that are not yet brands because they're not registered with brand registry, they don't have a trademark, and therefore they're not going to be able to upload a video um, for their product listing pages. Okay, so those are the three kind of terms, terminology that I'm gonna be talking about in this video, agents, sellers, and brands. And those are the three basic differences um, on those types of people that will be contacting you to create uh, videos for their products. Okay, so let's dive into the main points. How can you work with them? They will typically find you through email or they'll send you a direct message through social media. Um, you can be proactive by you know, putting your email account you know, listed on your social media. I do not recommend listing your email account on your Amazon influencer storefront. Amazon does not like when you try to take people off of their platform, right? But you can link to all of your social media within your Amazon 
Amazon influencer storefront. And so that's going to make it really easy for anyone really to be able to find you. They can go to your social, they can send you a direct message. So if you're like, well, no one's ever done that for me. And I've been, you know, publishing these videos on Amazon for a while now, I recommend you go to the, you know, the folders of requested people, because they're probably not going to be in your contacts, right? So look in those folders for direct messages that you don't usually look in, and you may find some agents, sellers, or brands trying to contact you uh, to negotiate creating videos for their products for Amazon. So once they reach out to you, what is the best way to negotiate? Um, my, my rule is I almost never work for free. And I have a couple exceptions that I'll talk to you about in just a second. But you know, don't work for free, you guys, because it just diminishes uh, the ability to be able to charge for your work. You should not work for free because your time is valuable. Um, just the fact that you're an Amazon influencer and have on-site commission, that is valuable. Not everybody has that. So, you know, my opinion is that you should always charge for your work um, unless there is some sort of extenuating circumstance to which you feel like maybe you don't need to or, you know, maybe just want the free product sample. And that's totally fine. So Sometimes if it's a higher price item of something that I really want and I really want to try out and the seller is just not budging because it's a, you know, item that's worth $500. Again, if it's something I really want and I know I'm going to use, I will do that one for free, right? But when you're doing them for free or when I'm doing them for free, I'm in control of the stipulations. If I'm doing a free video, I'm going to do it for how long I want it. I'm going to um, send it to them when it's ready, right? You know, those free videos are going to take me a lot longer than the ones that people are paying me for. I stayed away from doing this for such a long time because I didn't want to get into the minutia of working with agents and sellers and brands. And I just wanted to make product reviews on the things that I already had. But a lot of opportunities have been presented to me and some are just really, really great. So I think, you know, it's just important that you kind of vet those opportunities, do your research on the product, do your research on the agent, seller, or brand, whoever is reaching out to you and make sure that it's worth your while if you are going to do it for free. I highly recommend that you negotiate, even if it's $50, $100, negotiate some sort of price so that you, so that they know that you don't work for free, right? Because if you work for free, that seller, agent, brand, they're going to come back to you and constantly be asking you for free videos. The sellers that I have worked for for free are sellers that I already have some sort of relationship with, whether I've consulted for them in the past or I've already done video reviews that were paid for them, right? Or again, if the item is just worth a whole lot of money, sells for a lot of money on Amazon so that I know I'll be able to kind of earn that back with the commissions uh, that I earn through the video. So here's one thing that you should never, ever, ever do if anyone is asking you, seller, brand, agent, any of them, right? The one thing you should never do because it completely definitely violates Amazon's terms of service. And I see a lot of people talking about this right now. And I think a lot of influencers just don't know that this isn't okay. On the seller side, we know, right? But on the influencer side, we don't absolutely know this. But what you should never do is someone comes to you and says, hey, will you buy my product, buy this product, do your video, you know, put it up, put it up on Amazon, and then I will refund you for that product. Whether it's a video, whether it's a product review where you're going in and just reviewing, that is very, very much against Amazon's terms of service. You cannot purchase an item from Amazon, leave a review or create a video or anything whether it's through influencer or not, you cannot purchase something and then get a refund from the seller and it be compliant with Amazon. That is an absolute no-no. It's written many different places that that's not okay. Sellers get shut down for that and you can very much tell them, I know that's against Amazon's seller's terms of service and that's why I'm not gonna do that. So one other thing that they may ask you is they may want to use your video in wherever they want for their website for their social media and so they may ask if they have the rights or if they can own or purchase the rights to that video from you 
That is completely up to you, but if you do, I recommend you put a hefty price tag on that video because once you sell the rights to your content in your video, that typically gives them the right to use your content anywhere. Unless you have a nice contract that very much stipulates where they can and can't use that content, which I recommend that you have contracts regardless just to make sure that you're you're safe and you're you're keeping your yourself safe, uh, but also your content protected, right? But here's the thing, if they want the rights to the video, charge them, charge them $500. I wouldn't settle for anything less than $500 if a brand seller or agent wanted to buy the complete rights to my video, even if it's a one minute product video, because I know they can go then basically do whatever they want with that. Plus, if you give them the rights and they end up putting it on their Amazon product listing, that's pretty much going to negate your video from ever really earning commissions. Because even if your video is still on the product listing page and they're using your same video as the brand video, people are going to see that video first as a brand video and they're probably not going to watch the same video a second time for your influencer video, right? So you're not going to earn if the brand ends up taking your video as their brand video. It's going to be the first video that the customer sees and you're not going to earn commission for that. So one other thing to look out for is that when you are doing these negotiations and these deals, it's really important to then go follow up and make sure that the brand doesn't take your content as their own. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I've seen it over and over again. I think there are a lot of amazing brands and sellers and agents out there who would never do something like this, but there are also so plenty of brand sellers and agents who do do this, who have done this to me, who have done this to other people that I talk with, who have done this to my students that I teach. And so it's just really, really important that if you see a brand has stolen your video and used it as their brand video, so basically you will see that underneath there, it'll, it'll be one of the first videos, right? You can see the difference between the brand videos and the influencer videos. And if they take your influencer video and upload it as a brand video, and you did not give them permission to do that, you can very much contact them and let them know that you've seen it, ask them to take it down, but you can also report it directly to Amazon. And Amazon's pretty good about taking those down. Overall, I do think this is a great opportunity. There are also third party agencies that you can work with in order to give them your information and they will partner you with sellers. I work with a couple agencies that I really love. There's a whole lot out there. And so there's so many different ways to find sellers, agents, brands to work with, especially if you know you're doing something or you need something, right? You can always be proactive and go reach out to sellers and brands that you find on Amazon. Like I said, look for the brand name. You can click on their brand name right under the title of pretty much any product page, right? And if they're brand registered, if they truly are a brand that's recognized in Amazon's eyes, it will take you to their storefront that'll showcase, you know, the whole catalog of items that they have for sale on Amazon. And those would be the people that I would approach first in order to see if, you know, your brand aligns with their brand. Maybe you guys can come up with some sort of deal or partnership where you're doing videos for their products, right? And that could be a very lucrative opportunity for you. So lots of different ways you can do this. A couple, you know, cautionary things to just be careful of as you're going through this process. But I would love to hear uh, if this video was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments if you've worked with agents, sellers or brands in the past. I would love to hear all about it and make sure that you do subscribe to this channel if this was helpful so that you can be the first one to know as soon as a new video gets posted. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.